Thank you for the nice introduction. And it's my pleasure to presenting our work here. I started with machine learning. Generally speaking, we are talking about the ability of an algorithm to improve its performance. So machine learning is a sub-discipline of AI, which was the concept was introduced about 70 years ago. So machine learning starts with data gathering. It is a, a, say, a say saying, gap in, gap out. So this means high quality, good data is the basics for machine learning to predict performance for predictive modeling. And today I will start to introduce our well-designed Cora cohort and to show you how we pre predict CKD. So translation is our all goals, but I will not go any detail today. So this machine learning process, just like cooking, gathering good ingredients, enable good meal. A normal process for cooking is you find the recipe and cook properly, which is similar to the machine learning. You select the more a proper model and the training testing the data to avoid over or under feeding. A problem is arised if for some specific ingredients, there's no available recipe. For that, you have to generate a new one. Today, I will show you our recently developed uh, machine learning algorithm for normalize those kind of data. So data gathering can, can be very much time consuming. For example, in the population-based uh, cohort, Monica Cora cohort, this started in 1984 with four surveys and many follow-ups. So valuable samples have been collected and been well characterized for multi-level omics data, including metabolomics. So today I will mainly show you results based on the survey number four and the two follow-ups of these studies. It is very important to include positive and negative control samples in the study design to evaluate the variations of each targeted metabolites. For example, here I show you for one metabolite concentration over six times and for the identical QC samples, you see there's variations and the pre-processing data must be done. To develop this tiger, our initial aim is just to sample normalize the generated three time points data of the CORA study. For that, we started to select existing machine learning models. So generally speaking, they, they are three types, supervised, unsupervised, and the reinforcement, which is depends on the input data goals of the study. And uh, in our, these three studies, which I will mainly introduce you today, we used mainly supervised machine learning models. I will start it with these three models. This is our tiger result for the model development. Initially, Shi Yu trained QC models and tested with different QC one, two, three models. This is quite complicated box plots. Let's first start with this Y axis. Here we used two evaluation criteria because in the machine learning field, there's no 
p-values. And if you have lower RSD and MAPE values indicating your model have good performance. Sometimes if you have a lower SD but higher MAPE, that's the indication for our correction. So in the tiger compared to this overall raw values, as you can see, three all three QC values have good performance. Let's further zoom in. So here I show you this MAPE value of the in the Cora I54 data set of QC2 samples. Each dot represent in each box plot the uh, MAPE value for one metabolite. Here I start with raw value. What means here in the Cora I54 data set we have for each targeted metabolites. We have 29, we have 29 plates. We have 29 manufacturer provided QC plasma samples. And we have for each metabolites, we have 29 values. So for using these raw values, we calculate for each metabolite MPE value. This is the median of the value. And as you can see, we used all three machine learning models compared to the raw achieved improved performance. In fact, Su Yu spent lots of time to fine tune each of the three models using the QC samples with five-fold close validation. And uh, this, in general speaking, hyperparameter optimization is very much time consuming in the machine. Uh, so, Tiger overcome this drawback by integrating adaptable ensemble learning architecture and uh, Tiger is uh, free from model tuning. So here overall you can see with this uh, all three models, the en ensemble learning tech, uh, architecture, so random forest achieved the best performance for this QC2 sample in the Cora I54 data set. So therefore, Su Yu selected this uh, random forest to build Tiger model. And besides this evaluation in the using the Tiger, this is the raw value Tiger, Su Yu also compared with four popular used algorithm for data normalization, normalization factor, here, noise, serif, and wave ICA. As you can see here, with both RSD and MAPE, Tiger outperforms all this algorithm. In addition to evaluate the Cora F54 QC2 samples data, so Su Yu also evaluate two untargeted metabolomics data, P20 negative from US and the Amida data set from China. Overall, you can see here, Tiger outperforms all this previous algorithm on those old data set. Here, I'd like to indicate in the Amida data set, the RSC value is lower than the Tiger, but if you look at the MAPE values, this error rate is very high indication of our correction here. So Tiger further supports close key adjustment. Initially, the, we first started measurement of Cora I4, about 3,000 samples, and uh, we use the Biocratis P150 kit to adjust those three time points data. We remeasured together with the measurement of Cora I54. We remeasured about 288 samples randomly selected from the 38 plates. As you can see, the identical QC samples with the first measurement 
Cora Astro in 2011, about 10 years ago, and uh, this uh, two measurement conducted in 2019 with identical QC values, you see the variations. And with Tiger normalized data, this raw value of S4, F4, F4, with Tiger normalized data, as you can see here, the trends in the median response over time linearly increased. Here I show you these p-values generated with linear mixed effect models. And the Tiger is released as R package and the Suyu also developed a dynamic website. Now come to the prediction of chronic kidney disease. Jia Ling started data gathering by defining the incident CKD in hyperglycemia. Here, we use the Cora I4 as baseline and the follow up F4 as a uh, follow up, a second follow up as a follow, real follow up. And nice things with the population based study is that we have not only hyperglycemia cases, we also have controls, which is an unbiased uh, approach. As you can see here, in generally from the hyperglycemic participants, around 22% participants develop CKD over 6.5 years time in compared to the normal glucose tolerance uh, participants, only around 8% develop incident CKD. So data processing Jialing performed with normal normalization factor also worked quite well based on the three manufacturer provided uh, QC samples. And the Jialing used three step feature selection starting with logistic regression and then by considering a number of confounding factors. And she found two metabolites specifically um, as kind of a candidate bi biomarker for incident CKD only in hyperglycemic participants, but not in those uh, individuals with normal glucose tolerance. Our study was limited with that we could not find suitable replication. To overcome this limitation, Jia Ling performed for developing sets of predictors. She performed a tenfold cross validation with 100 random repeats. And she used three machine learning algorithms by trained the model with ninefold of the data and uh, test the tenfold to the trained model. And here, the AUC value is based on this test data, as you can see overall, our developer set of predictors, the median compared to the reference predictors, both are, are all uh, higher, meaning our developer sets of predictors outperform established uh, uh, clinical predictors for CKD. So, Jialing further did another uh, analysis to validate the identified two metabolites in the Cora F4 study, as you can see here, nicely confirmed also in the cross sectional study. And Jialing also tested in the multiple organs of uh, diabetic mice. As you can see here, these two metabolites both nicely validate only in the liver of diabetes mouse when compared to the Y-type controls, whereas we saw opposite effect in the adipose tissues and the urine samples. 
in overall our study indicate potential implication of labor only one metabolite and also in plasma of the DBDB mice. In summary, we are uh, gathering uh, high quality data, although it's time consuming, but it's essential. And I also showed you uh, Tiger uh, is user friendly and uh, machine learning help us to identify candidate biomarkers for CKD. So we did teamwork. I thank co-authors who contributed significantly to those three studies that I presented today. And uh, those studies are mainly supported by EU, BMBF, DCD, and our center. And I thank you for your attention.